Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Today we're going to be talking about Webpack. Now Webpack is a module bundler, meaning that you give it a bunch of modules through uh, require statements and then it bundles them up for you into a single file that you can load in your page. Uh, Webpack is rather unique because it's super flexible and it supports uh, many different file uh, or module formats. Now the reason you would want to use a uh, module uh, bundler is because typically if you have a uh, an HTML page um, in here you'll be adding uh, script tags uh, like such and you'll say one dot js and then maybe two dot js and then three dot js and if you already are cringing uh, good for you because yeah that's awful and the problem too is you know sometimes maybe uh, two has to be loaded after three and otherwise it doesn't work and you can get into really cumbersome situations dealing with script tags. So Webpack um, at its very basic level is a solution for this problem where we just load a single script tag of our bundle and it figures out the rest for us. So the first thing that you'll need is to have IOJS installed or Node.js installed uh, to use Webpack. And then once you, I'll, I'll put a link in the description to an earlier video of getting that going. Uh, but once you have that all installed, uh, you're ready to get going here. Um, so you can do npm init and we can start up our package.json file here. This will just create our package.json for us so we can save our modules and save us time uh, later by throwing things into it. Um, and then the next thing we want to do is install Webpack. And so I'm going to do npm install Webpack, and then I'm going to do save dev to save it to our dev dependencies. Now that it has finished installing, I'm going to go over to our package.json here, and in our start script, I'm going to use Webpack to bundle a file. And so we just type in Webpack, which is the name of the binary that will, it will run when we type npm start. And then you give it an entry file name or the file that starts everything off. It's our initial main point that our, our app is running off of. And then we give it an output name of where we want it to output the file to. And so we're just going to call that bundle here. So I'm going to go ahead and call or uh, create this index.js file here that will start things off. And now I'm just going to add a simple alert statement to see if it works. And hopefully that will push that out if it works. And then I'm going to go to my index.js or index.html file and ensure that we're calling the bundle here because this is what Webpack is going to compile to. It's going to compile to our bundle here. And so now that we have this start script, I can just go to my terminal and type npm start. And it will run Webpack. It will generate our bundle here. And sure enough, if we open our index.html file, we get a JavaScript alert notifying that it works. So what this is going to let us do, it's going to let us start to require other files from our main file here. So here in our index, uh, we're going to create a new file. And we're going to call it bear.js. And then we're going to use call, uh, we're going to say module exports, because we're going to say when we require this file, when we want to consume this file, um, we want to return something. And so this bear is basically just going to growl. And then back in our index.html, we can now uh, do an alert, and then we can say require. And we're going to use the uh, dot slash to mean that it's a local file here. And we'll say bear.js to name our file. And so what this is going to do, it's going to require this file, uh, which will return whatever we've exported here. Uh, and then it will uh, let us use this other file um, to alert it. So now all we have to do is just go back here and run npm start again to bundle with Webpack. Go to our web browser, refresh the page, and we get a growl. So it's working. Uh, it's managing our dependencies. Uh, we don't have to worry about script tags. We can just add require statements and nest them um, as much as we want and never have to worry about that again. Okay, but you might already be sick of typing in npm start every time you make a change. So Webpack has a module for this called uh, um, Webpack Dev Server. Um, so we're going to do npm install Webpack Dev Server. And this is only supposed to be used for development practices. Uh, you'd want to actually bundle and use the bundle on a, you know, a more professional server when you're going to do anything for production. Uh, but this is great for rapid uh, prototype development when you just want to uh, see the output of all your changes every change you make. OK, now that has finished installing, we can go to our package.json. And we can change our, um, our start script here to call Webpack Dev Server instead. 
uh, by saying webpack dev server, and then we'll just give it the entry point. Um, and because the, the output file doesn't matter anymore, it's just going to bundle this and serve it on a web page. And so now when we go back to our terminal, we type npm start, it's going to start up a server for us that has the latest thing going. And so now if I go to localhost 8000, which is the uh, default port that it runs on, oh, excuse me, localhost 8080 is the default one. Um, so you'll see a server running and we get our alert that says growl and just to check to make sure everything is work uh, we'll prepend a string that says growl it still works and save that our bundle is available so when we refresh the page we get growl it still works so that's great uh, now webpack will recompile every single time we make a change and so uh, there's another cool thing that Webpack will do. So right here we have our bear, and this is just going to return growl uh, from our, our bear um, file here. And this is all synchronous, meaning it will happen um, as we type it. It's not going to happen at a later time. Uh, so we can say what the bear says here, and we can assign it here. Um, but let's say, you know, down the road, maybe bear, uh, you know, we're going to install npm install jQuery and save that and you know maybe maybe bear is getting more complex um, so we'll just require jQuery here um, and then I don't know let's let's make a div here a div tag and then the HTML it, you know he's a grizzly bear now because grizzly bears are big and so he's gonna do a grizzly growl and so we're just gonna export this uh, this div tag here um, and this is just big because it now includes jQuery uh, that we've installed from npm and it's creating the div tag that's growl and it's just a humongous grizzly bear and so now our bear here um, you know we we can put them in the page here but maybe maybe it's taken too long to load or, or any kind of reason and we want to show a loading screen or you know we just want to have bear loaded later maybe it's optional uh, we don't need to load bear at this time uh, maybe it's like a big dependency that you know only matters when a user clicks into a certain thing so anyways webpack has a way to load this uh, dynamically or asynchronously and you basically do it by calling your require statement and putting the first parameter as an array here by putting these brackets in and then the the second uh, parameter here is going to be a function that will get called when bear has finished loading and it'll supply the bear um, as an argument uh, for what has been exported here. So now we can simply load this file um, and then we can say uh, document body append child and we can append our bear to the page. And so now when we do npm start to fire up our server, you'll notice here we have two chunks. So the first thing is our bundle.js, and that is only 3.8K. Uh, that's really slim and that's really small because it's basically just this file. And then at this point, it splits off the chunk and starts loading bare asynchronously, which includes jQuery. And so that's why when you look here at this chunk that it's including, it is 256K, so it's a little bit bigger. So now when we go to our file here and uh, refresh the page, oh, uh, I got an error here, oh, okay. Yeah, so basically uh, right now we're returning um, what a, a jQuery wrapped element and we just want the actual element. So we're just going to put zero there because uh, we're calling document body without jQuery. Um, so we can just call bear zero there and refresh the page and now we get our element on the page here. Um, so you can see we have a div tag with grizzly growl. And then if you look in the network tab, um, you'll see that first it loads our bundle.js and then that dynamically loads our bundle, uh, our one.bundle.js. So this is true asynchronous uh, uh, b module loading here. So another great part about Webpack is that it lets you load other things besides JavaScript as modules, uh, such as CSS. So say we're in here and we want to color our bear. We're going to require bear.css here. And let's just go ahead and create this file, bear.css. And we're going to say, OK, all bear.css tags, you know, they're, uh, let's just say color is red. Um, 
And so this on its own is going to give us an error because CSS is not valid JavaScript. And so instead what we need to do is we need to load a appropriate loader for it. And so we're going to use the, we're going to npm install uh, the CSS loader. And so what this will do is it'll convert our CSS uh, into uh, valid JavaScript. Let's start up our server here. Um, in which that we can consume. So to use a loader, you just prefix the name of the loader, and you can do CSS or C or you, CSS loader, or you can just simply live off, leave off the dash loader, and it will uh, it will know to to use it. And then you put an exclamation point. And so this says we're going to load this file, and then we're going to pass it through uh, this CSS loader first. And so now uh, we no longer uh, have an invalid bundle; it will be JavaScript. And what we get here is uh, just basically uh, raw CSS, or rather an object that uh, represents our CSS um, that we can use. And so if we look down here, you see we get um, an array here, and you see we get our div color red. So you're know, thinking, what am I going to do with this? Well, one thing you can do is now that it's able to be read through JavaScript, is you can simply just have it apply it um, to the page. And so there's another loader called uh, the style loader here. And so we're going to npm install style loader and save it to our dev dependencies and start up our server again. And so here, if we don't need to do anything with this CSS, we just simply want to apply it to the page. We can say we can uh, chain our, our loaders here. So we can say load this bare CSS, uh, convert the CSS into JavaScript that it can read, and then simply apply it to a, the page as a style tag. So now when we save the page here and refresh, uh, it adds the style uh, um, tag to our page which then will color our red bear. So what's great about this is that even CSS uh, will be traversed as modules. So in CSS, you use these uh, at import statements um, to signify that you want to load another module. Um, but Webpack will go ahead and just traverse that. So like say if we have this uh, base CSS file here, and I'm going to create this new base.css file, and in here our body um, let's just pick a awful, horrible color, I don't know, green. Um, our body background color is green here in this base file, and then that, which is loaded by our, uh, our bear.css. Uh, Webpack will just traverse through that. It will also traverse through uh, URL statements, so if it's an image file, it will either inline them into your CSS or load them uh, dynamically. Uh, depending on your settings. And so um, it's it's great for module loading things that are not JavaScript. Uh, so let's go ahead and refresh our page and we get this hideous green with red text. Okay, so that's great. Um, but you're probably not into prefixing all your uh, loaders in every require statement here. So uh, it's probably recommended, or it's not probably, it is recommended to create a configuration file. And so by default, Webpack will use a, will look for a file called webpack.config.js. And you, it's simply a node script here that you just export, um, and you supply it uh, configuration vowels. And so the first thing we want to do um, is uh, define our entry point here, and this will be index.js. And then we're going to define our output uh, paths and stuff here. And even though we're using Webpack Dev Server, which doesn't use this output, uh, if we call the Webpack binary directly to produce our bundle, this is what it'll use. So it's definitely recommended. And I'm just going to pass in the path. And this is just the path to or the folder uh, that we want to output our bundle to. And as you see here, uh, that Webpack um, will sometimes compile out multiple files depending on the assets, whether they're images or CSS or if you're chunking or, or doing kinds of things. Um, it really needs a folder to output to um, rather than just a single file. But you are going to supply a file name and this is just used um, to base of what those chunk names are going to be based off of. So this is a, a very simple uh, Webpack config right here that just defines an entry point and an output path and file name. Uh, but what we want to do is we also want to specify our module loaders. So we're going to say uh, add, a, add an object here called module, and in that we're going to specify loaders here. And loaders is an array of different 
conditions uh, to meet. So we want to specify a loader. Uh, so we're going to say uh, test. And anything that ends with dot CSS, this is just regular expressions. Um, so basically what it's going to do, Webpack is going to test every file that runs through it and says, okay, does this file end with .css? And if it does, we're going to supply loaders to it. So we're going to say style and CSS, just like you saw before in the require statement. So this is just simply saying, okay, any file we're going to test to see if it ends with .css. If it does, we're going to apply these loaders to it. So now what we can do is we can go here to our bear and we can simply remove uh, these prefix loaders and it's going to say, it's going to match this .css and says, oh, we want to load those uh, with the CSS and the style loader. Uh, so we're going to go here and refresh our server, our Webpack dev server, and now it's going to read that Webpack um, config file. So when we go back to our web page, we can hopefully get that lovely ugly green, yes. We do, we get the ugly, lovely green. So this is a, uh, a really powerful tool because there's many loaders for things. You can do images, fonts, you can do less, SAS, stylus, uh, templating, handlebars, um, all kinds of things you can load through uh, Webpack and load them as modules. So I hope this has helped you get started with uh, Webpack. And if it has, then uh, please share the video and help others get started with Webpack. Um, and if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. And thanks again for watching.